Hi guys, I was asked to make a video over the differences between completely randomized design versus cluster sampling, so on and so forth. So I'm going to start you off here by looking at the first question you just have to ask yourself when you're thinking about multiple choice or your free response is this. Am I dealing right now with an experiment or an observational study? And remember that an experiment imposes a treatment on someone. There is something called an uncontrolled experiment. That is not a good experiment. You cannot um, find evidence for causation. For example, I could say, does jumping jacks increase heart rate? Come in, have everyone measure their pulse. Do 10 jumping jacks, have everyone measure their pulse again. That is an uncontrolled experiment. It is not a great experiment. There's no control. There's no randomization. Um, and we don't know if there's replication. So we can, do we have an experiment? Was a treatment imposed? We want to make sure it's a well-designed experiment. And you need to read through the four elements of a well-designed experiment and have those down for tomorrow. Or do we have an observational study? We are not imposing a treatment. We're purely just observing something or giving a check-the-box kind of sample survey. Observational studies is where we can get a lot of bias. For example, the non-response bias or the response bias. Those are non-sampling errors. Or we could get um, a sampling error where we have under coverage. Okay? Look into your notes, send me an email, you still have questions on those. But let's get back to the question at hand. Let's look at experiments, the different types of experiments. We have the first one we learned, which is a completely randomized design. This is where we have one hat, okay? We take our group of people, our subjects, we do a random assignment, okay? The random assignment could be the hat method or an SRS. Um, it's somehow, somehow to get them randomly into group one and group two or however many groups we need. We then give them our treatments. That would be next in the line. We then measure the results. Okay, that's a completely randomized experiment. I can do more on that at the end if we need. A block design, in fact, let me quick diagram it, only for the fact that a, it will be better for the block design. So a completely randomized experiment. We have our subjects. We use random assignment, like the hat method to get to group one or group two or however many groups we need. We take our treatment one and our treatment two. We then measure the response. Okay, so that is a completely randomized design. Next we have a block design. A block design is now two hats. It's similar to a stratified random sample it's just different terminologies. In fact, it's the same thing. So we take our blocks and we usually block by what the potential lurking variable is. For example, if we think gender may have an effect on the response, we want to make sure that the response is because of the treatment and not because of certain genders. So we block by gender. For example, we put boys in one group and we put girls in the other. And then we take this completely randomized design here and we repeat it twice, one with boys and one with girls. So we have our random assignment, we go to group one, we go to group two, we take treatment one, we take treatment two, and then we measure the response. We do the same thing again for the girls, random assignment, group one, group two, treatment one, treatment two, measure the response. Now that random assignment, let me talk just a minute about it. That random assignment, you are using an SRS to get to group one. We need a sample of the subjects in group one. We need a sample of subjects in group two. Okay, our subjects are here, right? Or you could think about it again here. Group one, I need a sample of boys in group one, and I need a sample of, of boys in group two, and you're going to end up using all of them, right? The best way to do an SRS to get a sample is just use, this, is use the hat method, okay? Don't focus too much on saying SRS, just like using the hat method to get there. Use an SRS more when we're doing an observational study. Hopefully I'm not talking too much and confusing you. 
Let's go back to the flow chart. We talked about a completely randomized design. We talked about a block design. I have a separate video on a separate video on this online already if you need to watch that, which would explain it more in depth. Then we have our matched pairs design. That was the example. And again, please watch the video about the boots. The key with the matched pairs design is people get both treatments. These are the three different options for experiment, what you may run into, the types of design. Don't focus too much on that SRS piece there. It's just the hat method to get to the different groups. In matched pairs, we can just flip, flip a coin to say, which treatment do I get first? Which treatment do I get second? Now we have our observational studies. In an observational study, again, we're just checking the box. So we could to do an observational study on Armstrong High School. I want to check the box. What college are you going to? I want to interview 100 people. I put everyone from Armstrong in the names of a hat on identical slips of paper. I mix that hat up. I pull out 100 names. This is an SRS, a simple random sample. Now you can always use the table with that. And remember, I will be strict on the table. What do I expect? How are you going to label your population? I'm going to label the population of Armstrong 0001 to 2000. Next, I'm going to go to line 101. I'm going to go from left to right across line 101 by four digits. If the number is between 001 and 2000, that number is part of our sample. If it's not, we throw it out. If it's a repeat, we ignore it. We stop. We continue this process until we get 100 numbers between 001 and 2000. This is our sample. We'll give our sample survey to all 100 people. What college are you going to? Check the box. SRS, simple random sample. I'm looking for the four things. Label, how you use the table. St I'm looking for repeats and throwing out. And finally, I'm looking for stopping roll. Stratified random sample. A stratified random sample is the Hunger Games. I'm doing a simple random sample on the different hats. So I have boys and I have girls. I put all the boys' names in a hat. I pull out 10 names. I sample them. I give them the sample survey. I do it again from girls. Why is a stratified random sample not a true SRS? Because there's no way I could get all boys in, exam in a sample. I could not get all girls in a sample because my sample will consist of some boys because I have a hat for boys and it will consist of a sample for some girls. The Hunger Games had to have one boy. It had to have one girl. It could not have two boys or two girls. There is not an equal chance of all combinations of size two in the Hunger Games. One boy, one girl, it has to be. And finally, the cluster sample. The cluster sample was the example about the advisories, where I put all advisor teachers in a name, um, names in a hat on identical slips of paper. I mix up the hat. I pull out three advisors' names, and everyone in that advisory is sampled. That's the key. Everyone is sampled. Someone asked, what is a multi-stage? A multi-stage you will not be tested on. You don't need to know. If you are curious what a multi-stage is, would be if I'm going to do a cluster sample first to get the homeroom teachers or advisories. I get my three teachers' names, and then instead of interviewing everyone in the homeroom, I do an SRS of five students from each homeroom. So I put everyone from my homeroom in a hat. I pull out five names, and those people get sampled. Not every person in my homeroom gets sampled. That's it. I'm sorry I stumbled over my words, but I'm tired after a Monday, and I hope you guys are preparing well and having a great night. Email me with any questions.